It's Friday night, and this is a familiar scene in many American cities. A scantily clad woman walking the streets looking for clients. But this city is San Francisco, and it's the setting for a different approach to prostitution that seems to be reducing the outdoor sex trade through education rather than prosecution. How much do you want, sex or blowjob? The deal is struck. The client, known in the trade as John, has agreed to pay her $20 to give him oral sex. He was too nervous and excited to notice that man across the street. But the man noticed him and heard every word. You better pull over right here. That's because the person soliciting for sex was monitored all the time by an undercover police squad. And now he's in trouble. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Sir, but if it's his first back, such right. offense, he's lucky he committed it in San Francisco. Stop resisting, stop resisting. And lucky that the prostitute was a decoy, a member of the police squad. Titillation quickly turns to humiliation as the prospective client's details are recorded for posterity. Men like these could face up to six months in jail for this demeanor okay, charges, of soliciting and further. See what I'm saying? But if you chose this, she'll take care of the ticket. But in this liberal city of San Francisco, most first-time offenders have typically been let off lightly. Some Johns would pay a fine or do community service and soon be back on the streets looking for sex, which is always available. Then things changed and the authorities began acting rather than reacting doing it with the help of former prostitutes. You have no class, no dignity, no nothing. I just wanted to bite it off and spit it at you. And you really think it's OK to purchase human beings to make you feel better. These women are addressing the John School, where first offenders pay $500 to learn the perils of prostitution. The money and the day's education is in lieu of formal charges and also means that family and friends need never know about the offense. As well as hearing from prostitutes about life on the streets, a degradation the men sustain the by their soliciting, the clients the turn students vagina. receive graphic information about the risks to themselves. Herpes infection of somebody's the shock penis. tactics it's lower the, the men's defenses. Corona here. And they then they're right subjected to the heartrending right tales right of the women who've been able to get to out. Live, be free from abuse. Harrowing be personal from testimonies from former street prostitutes aimed at getting the men to change their ways before it's too late. I had some anger, some rage, and I wanted to put a knife in somebody's gut and turn it. Program founder Norma Hotterling sold her body for 20 years to fund her heroin addiction. She now works to get prostitutes off the streets and has set up another group to get the women into various recovery projects. Her erstwhile colleagues are shown as victims of circumstance, not born criminals. I was sexually abused from about the age of five years old. I was told messages like you were put on this earth to be a sexual object for men. You know, I was told the only reason that you're here on this earth is to give me head. Many prostitutes become virtual slaves to the men who rule their lives, the pimps. I had a pimp who would beat me up if I didn't steal your money. And that was on a daily basis. In her 27 years on the streets, Betty Ricks became extremely dangerous. Whatever I could do to take your money, I would. I would have my girlfriend hide under the bed, hide in the closet, put you in a shower, come back in, take your keys, go to your car, because you know a lot of you guys like to lock your wallets up in your trunk, break in your car and take all your stuff. And hopefully we don't take your life, because we really don't care about you. And if you had enough money, we might take your life. Tracy Helton was a college student when she got hooked on drugs. She turned to prostitution and then turned on the men who paid for her body. I would come up to your work sometimes to ask you for money, sometimes just to embarrass you. Sometimes just to come up to your work because I had so much hostility, I would come and just simply embarrass you because you knew who I was. You knew you had a done a date with me in your Mercedes repair shop. So I would come to the door and I would embarrass you because it made me feel good with the, with the thoughts that someday I was going to extort money from you. But not everyone applauds the John School and its concentration on street prostitutes. They only account for about 10% of sex workers. Carol Lee of the sex workers organization Coyote 
believes legalizing prostitution would do more than the program does. Not all prostitutes are victims. Certainly there's much more victimization because of the criminalization, and because of the criminalization of the drugs. But, you know, we understand that, that there are call girls, there are massage workers, there are all sorts of workers in this industry that are not the kind of victims that are portrayed in this program. Some first-time offenders complain of police coercion and entrapment, while everyone disputes the statistics and the value of the program. One day? Why are your pants unzipped? In San Francisco, we've had over 2,500 men go through this program. And so far, we've had only 17 rearrests. So that's about a less than 1% recidivist rate. It's very good. The recidivism rate with clients in general is only 2%. So they've reduced it 1%. And I think that's not what they're mentioning in their statistics. So it's, it's, it's certainly misleading. You've got to register with the Statistics aside, care. the men on the program Your are reminded of what happens if they do reoffend. And if you don't think that sex in an alley is a problem, talk to Hugh Grant. He didn't have a program like this. He had to go to probation for a couple of years and pay a big fine. He probably wishes he had a program like this. Most students declined to appear on camera, but said the program made a big impact. The combination of shock tactics and sob stories seemed to work. Some of the money they've paid has also helped former prostitutes like Agnes Mercurio. Accounts like hers of life on the streets convinced some men never to solicit again. The prostitutes, uh, when they talked about their life and stuff they went through, so it really touched me. Uh, made me, you know, more aware of what they went through, you know, that they are victims, you know, and uh, the things they be going through. So, you know, it, it really made me take another look at myself. Start cultivating your life because you can make it something that is enjoyable and fulfilling and beautiful and wonderful. And you're not going to find that from a woman on the street. You're not going to get any kind of fulfillment other than a little bit of instant gratification. You know, then I bet you feel pretty dirty afterwards. I always did. You know. The San Francisco program is having an effect, but this particular lady of the night can't hang up her boots just yet because more than a hundred new offenders are still being arrested each month. The oldest profession will remain just that as long as there are men willing to pay for it.